Hi everybody, John here. Uh, I'm joined again by Jacob and Mark, and we're going to continue our discussion of version 4 Flames of War, which we're very excited for. So this particular video, we're going to talk about the Desert Rats Mid-War Sourcebook. And I'm going to turn it over to Mark uh, to, to start our discussion here. So Mark? Yeah, so um, I got a nice, I got a look at a, uh, a preview copy of the book. Um, and you know, this is a big thing for me. This is, this is where I started in Flames of War. Uh, I love the idea of British tanks just swanning around the blue, as they say, with that old dash and Elan and killing German tanks, probably from the side, not the front. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, this is, as I say, this is, this is definitely what I love about the desert. Um, so getting back to this was a big deal. Uh, so looking through the book, starting out with the formations with the tanks, um, not much has changed here. I know a lot of people were kind of concerned and saying, oh, you know, where are my Shermans? They were, you know, they were brought in for El Alamein, but, you know, to be honest, Selfishly, I never ran Shermans in uh, that mid-war desert. I just I like Grant. The Grant yeah. is an iconic tank. It's the one I chose, so I have the Grant. Um, I kind of <laughs> kind of poo pooed that Grant. Actually, thinking it was going to be a little expensive in the points. It's, it's, it's 18 points for three, which gets you a lot of Crusaders and the Honeys. But in the game I played, those Grants they, they held up great. Um, being hit on a four plus actually is a big big difference. Yes, they lost a little bit of range in the gun. Um, they lost a little 18 in the gun, but yeah, they, they held out that flank. I, I'm glad to see that I'm not completely disappointed in the Grants. Crusaders, I, I like the Crusaders. That bombardment from the CS tanks is a big deal, especially the way artillery has changed. Um, smoke, if you can range in, is great. But, uh, <laughs> but actually, even with the firepower, the, the 3 plus firepower made a difference in the game. Um, and then, you know, getting Crusader 2s and upgraded to Crusader 6s, you do have to make that choice. Uh, the two is only AT7. It's, it's not going to do a lot of damage unless you get to the side armor, which with a 14-inch tactical move, you, you can do so. But even just upgunning one Crusader 3 to one Crusader 2 to a 3, giving you that 18-9, they did some good work for me, I think, in our game. They, they're a little deadly. Um, so I do like that still. But I'm going to add, I wasn't going to buy any more. I'm buying more Crusaders. There's no <laughs> question. I need, more, I need more twos. Anyway, I don't have enough twos. I have uh, too many threes. So I will be adding some boxes of Crusaders. So the plan um, worked. You're buying more. <laughs> you know, um, but I also have kind of like a squadron of Honey Stewarts. But I, I don't know if I like the Honey Stewarts as much. Yeah. And I know you're a big Honey Stewart fan. And yeah, me yeah, too. Yeah, yeah <laughs> gunning. I mean, it's a great tank, but you know, losing, not being as fast as Crusader can come when it matters. A tactical speed. Yeah, dash speed. They're up the there. Dash is he bounces around. Yeah, but you've got know, five machine gun shots too. Though. That's and actually an AA machine gun, which it's not. You know, it's not. not uh, well, the nice thing with the honey, though, is the no HA rule isn't quite as brutal as in yes. version three. True. So you can actually shoot at a minus one and one harder at uh, gun teams and infantry, where you couldn't do that at yeah. all in version mm -hmm. three. Yeah. Now, granted, you're usually shooting at veteran Germans. Yeah, I hit. So you did it in a row. <laughs> <That's a laughs> a two pounder. But uh, have, just having that option is is pretty awesome. It's helpful. So, Mark, as far as the lists go, do you think that there's enough variety there? Um, in the, well, I just looked at tanks so far. Yeah. So the tanks are is very much unchanged. I think from the probably say outside of the Sherman, it's got everything you need from the original list. I have no issue with what's happened with the tanks actually in the uh, the new book. I think it's a it's actually better to be honest. I think you can take um, you can say you have room to take two squadrons. I know people keep talking about the sixty honey stewards and hundred points and sixty crusaders, but. <laughs> Yeah, it's a great lot. It's a bunch of tanks on the table, but you really kind of miss out on some of the meat potatoes of the list, um, artillery, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't think you'll see it that often. I do see, think you'll probably, you might see two formations of them. I think you might see that, at least have you know a good number on the table. But um, yeah, I don't think the tanks have lost out on anything. Yeah. One thing I think is at least worth mentioning, I know that with the three honey stewards in each platoon, the way the new rules work, um, you know, if one's dead, one's bailed, then you need to, at the beginning of the starting step, test to see if it gets back in. If it doesn't, then you're testing on a on a motivation to last in a five plus. Yep. You were <laughs> whining a lot before we played the game. I was whining. I told you to lose. You were uh, you were bemoaning the bemoaning. <laughs> get on my thesaurus. <laughs> um, no, but I, and so you know you were saying you're just going to lose these formations, yeah. you know, left and right. You, you did roll well on on your last stand, but in the four end, five in a row. I think yeah, just four. Okay. Yeah, morale test in a row. But I think it's actually there's something to be said that at the starting step, you know, you. You have a chance to get back in, yeah. and it, it wasn't as detrimental as I think we kind of thought when we were first going through these books. And I know I didn't, you know, I think I, the way I, I say, I mean, I've got the battle report here, but yeah. um, 
I didn't use my HQ well, and if I had my HQ within sight of some of those unit leaders, rerolling those guys, the motivation to get back in would have helped considerably. Um, but uh, it's tough. I mean, you've got to, you know, you're basically reluctant train. You said by using version three terms, you're reluctant train for those tanks now when it comes to morale, um, which means obviously you're going to have more on them, and you you need to use that quickly because you are going to start losing tanks mm -hmm. as the game progresses. Any more comments on the tank? I, I say I'm not I'm not unhappy with the tanks in the book. I, I think they're they're excellent. You know, they've got everything that I like to play. Selfishly, I say I've never <laughs> been playing Sherman, so so you're, you're, you're good. Back to your own yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're good with stats. But I'm the same way yeah. with Shermans in, in mid war. It's like I, I play with enough Shermans in late war that if I'm playing mid war, I want Grants. I, you know, yeah, I want right. I want the, I, that iconic that was only used there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I'm kind of happy with their their inclusion as well. Yeah. And I'm not a British player, but I've, I've got Grants and Stewart, so yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how that goes. So what do you think about the stats, though? So you're good with the stats? I'm good with it. I am, actually. I say, yeah, the, grant, the AT, uh, the six-pounder went down from 10 to 9, and the Grants went down from 10 to 9, but it, you know, I, I, the, the points seem like they work out pretty good. They're cheaper. Uh, you're getting a lot on the table, so... And it gives that feel of what you read about the British just struggling to knock out German tanks, and they're just you know so irritated with their shots bouncing off the front <laughs> armor um, and having to really close the range. And you get that feel in the game, and you so it's uh, I'm okay with that. Yeah, it gives a, a kind of you you said it in the battle report this reckless yes they they charge forward with yeah. reckless abandon to yeah. to get into grips with the Germans, which is cool. So I like seeing that historical fact and this played out. You miss smoke rounds? Smoke clouds. Oh, smoke yeah. clouds. Smoke clouds after the tanks. I know that's just a visual. Oh, yeah. Maybe yeah. because I made so many. Again, it's all about me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you I know, know I, I think it could be worth, you know, it's another way using short terrain and dash speed. It would be useful. But again, is it necessary? Maybe not. Time to strain. Yeah, that was a cool thing in version three. You had the smoke cloud. If you moved, you placed a two inch smoke cloud behind your tank. Yeah, they keep them in the And uh, they, oh, they, they keep them in the They are in the pictures. Yeah, they're in the pictures. Yeah, they're in the pictures. They're in the pictures. They're in the pictures. They're in the pictures. They're but that's gone. You're right. It's it's yeah. gone. I think it should be an easy add in, though. Yeah. Because one of my favorite things was a picture from your Shifting Sands where you had your entire army entire with army with smoke, yeah. uh, you know, kicked up behind it. That was an yeah. awesome awesome sight. Which that's when there was transports too. Though. There's <laughs> transports too. <laughs> I use people say they don't use transports a lot. I had 25 pounds and quads. I just ran, I ran those up there. And crash it worked out for you. I crash acted in the front of me and then I just tried to get that. It, that was the whole point. Everything, everything <laughs> quiet of them and, and ignored the rest of the army. It's just the whole way it works. I don't remember that working out. But that's <laughs> fine. So Mark, how many lists are there in in this, uh, in, in there, so so you've got a so formations wise, formations, you have, sorry, yes, formations, you've got a grant yes. formation. You have the uh, Crusader formation, which is going to make it be Crusader CS tanks, or Crusader twos and threes, a combination of those, and the Honey Stewart tanks. So that is the Honey Stewart formations. That's your three tank formations, okay. and then also which we haven't spoke about yet is the uh, the Moda company, which is your infantry formation. Gotcha. Um, so going on to the Moda company. Um, one thing I, I, you know, the motor company is the the infantry element of the armored uh, brigade, I guess it is. Um, and it, but to me right now in the rule, it doesn't feel like it's a mechanized company. It almost feels like a infantry company in a brigade box mm -hmm. in, during mm -hmm. the mid-war because it's very static. Yes, you have some universal carriers, um, but uh, they're just there to kind of scout out. But the infantry don't have great mobility, and because their numbers are so small, Getting across the table in one piece is going to be a little tough. Six pounders, we've already talked about it. You know, forgetting that whole porty action, which, you know, we've, you know, people, we've talked about that already. They only move at two inches tactical. So once you place them, um, they're, they're fairly immobile. And yeah. I, I didn't place mine actually very well in a battle report, so they did not have a very good game um, based on the way that Jacob moved later on. So placement's going to be a lot more important for those six pounders. Um, I wish they did have some more mobility because it doesn't feel like a motor company, it feels like an actual static infantry company. Um, maybe that'll change in a few more games, but that's what it feels like initially. Yeah. Um, but as far as the makeup of it, yeah, the motor, the motor case, only six teams. Um, you lost the option to take a couple more anti-tank rifles, which was in the last edition. You still get the light mortar, still get your uh, MG teams. They're all still there. Um, you have your head machine guns. Uh, they can fire bombardments, which is uh, different than before. The motor company could not, it was only the rifle company. So you have a head machine gun platoon that can fire some bombardments. Um, the mortar platoon is outstanding. <laughs> Even just two mortars, I mean, it's, 
Yeah, boy, they can hit pretty hard. So I, I love the fact that mortars have actually become really useful. They have, yeah. They have. Um, the six pounder uh, is, is the six pounder. It's, it's a good gun. It's not gonna, you know, it's not gonna wipe anything out. It can't hurt the tiger, but you know, I'm okay with that. You know, people are gonna say, well, the six pounder knocked out the first tiger in two days ago, hit it in the turret ring, but the, you know, in the D6 <laughs> game, game, in the D6 yeah. game, you know, <laughs> covering that yeah, one possible it. fluke, yeah, I'm okay with that. Um, six pounder is still a good gun. Still rate of fire three. No, no, it's actually most of, I think I've noticed most guns have gone down to rate of fire yeah, too. Mm -hmm. uh, they're more survival, but they, rate of fire has come down. And I think that's okay, because it could be a little overpowered, I think, if they're just bouncing every shot coming their way and then hitting back with three shots. So I'm now okay you're, with that. You're saying they're more survival. Why are they more survival in version three? Because, well, right now they've got their gun save, on the small guns that is, so not the larger ones, is a three plus, no matter what. No matter what. Even, right, if, you, right. even if you fired, you have a three plus save coming back, and that they don't say that that's a big deal. Um, that's uh, that makes them definitely worth taking in, in the actual role. You're not afraid. So what happened in Vision Three is you basically sat there. Right. You didn't shoot. You just mm -hmm. kind of sat there until you were either charged or somebody got really close, you inside armor. Right. Now you can shoot. It's okay losing gun on the ground. Yeah, you might get hit just a little bit easier, um, but your your save is still there. Mm. You just got to watch out for artillery. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. that's going to be the buzzword. And I think the last part is the universal carry. Again, I think right now it's, you've got the scout with it, which is useful. I actually used it in the last game to kind of give me that little boost up to the town. Yeah. Um, but I, I do feel like a lot of people have now, once they've done that, they're going to hide. They're going to hide them off so that you keep the platoon, the whole formation in good spirits because it's two points. Um, it will be, you know, you hide it near your objective so you can all, you know, feed it to your objective to keep it going and. I, you know, I don't see much else useful once the game begins because their morale is a little weak. It's uh, yeah, they you know they last down on the five plus like the, some of the tanks. Um, so I, I don't see them getting a ton of other use. Yeah, I think that's that's gonna happen with most scouts. Is like their their assault, their their weaker in assault. Yeah. Um, That's their counterattack. Yeah, I mean the scouts are not supposed to be. Assault, you know. Yeah, yeah, and since we lost uh, eyes and ears and stuff like that, there's no yeah. point having them up. For moving gun to ground because that's not a thing anymore. Mm -hmm. they, they can't do it. So I guess briefly just chatting what scout actually kept because I mean you you we still have cautious movement basically. Kind of yeah. yeah. Basically the scout yeah. rule allows you to be uh, yeah hidden if you conceal you get gone to ground even if you move as long as you don't shoot um, and then of course you get the spearhead to go with it. Yeah, I think in the late war uh, if you're a recce platoon your unarmored teams get a four up save for your jeeps. Oh, okay, so, so it's actually one worse. It's one worse than yeah. it was before. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. But, um, so that's the, uh, the motor company, the motor formation, excuse me, um, which, again, I'm, you know, in my game I took one motor, one tank, and I think that's going to be a common theme because you need something to hold ground. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want to be all tank and probably not having something dug in on the objective. So. But it, it's cheap. You, know, you, don't, you can get a decent company without spending a ton of points on it, which I, I kind of like that. You know, I noticed like with this list too, it looks like um, you need the infantry to, to cover something because if you leave an objective uncovered, Everything's so fast. You're going to get there quick. They, they could be there, tanks could be there in a turn, and infantry could be there in two turns if you leave it open. Yeah. Whereas in version three, I think you could kind of uh, leave an objective open for a while, and, you know, those infantry will get here <laughs> eventually. But, uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. So, um, what did you guys, either, either of you guys read the history portion in this book? No, of course not. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> or you were no, no I, I, you know, I, I, you know, it's like, actually, my Crusader Force is based off the, uh, the fourth county of London Yeomanry. So, um, my, actually, I, I, my force is actually in that book. So, that's good. I'm okay with that. And I don't remember the motor. The, I think the motor is either the first rifle brigade. I'd have to go back and look. <laughs> I think it's the first rifle brigade. Yeah, I, and um, let's see. So, we talked about the rifle brigade. The next section it's is support, support, support units. Yeah, so support, you don't get a lot. Um, but again, you get the iconic pieces of equipment. You get the 25 pounders, which I'm so happy they are so much better. I mean, the big the going from five plus firepower to four plus, you're not killing stuff every turn, but it's a huge difference. Yeah. Um, and they're still decent in direct direct fire, which you know came up in our game too. So they are a universal uh, weapon system, and I think you know even their 14 points for four, don't leave home without them. They're an outstanding unit, yeah. and they're now even though they're large guns dug in, they're concealed. And mm -hmm. they're fearless, basically, same as being fearless. I know fearless weapon doesn't exist, but their skills are three plus, their morale is a three plus. They are a, an excellent unit. Uh, yeah, a big fan of 25 pounders. Always have been, though. Yeah. It's one of my favorite units. Bare chested. 
artillery <laughs> gunners, brits with knee socks, and yeah. that's what else. What else you need? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, honey observer, you know the the OP. So you've only got one option. That's a tank, and that's a honey observer tank, which is which is great. You know, it's a, it's fairly uh, historic. Um, I have a couple of models though uh, that I converted of observer. Yeah, the guy on the, yeah, the, guy on the, the ladder on the truck. truck. I'll probably turn that into objective, so I kind of miss miss that guy. Unless maybe the infantry will have some different options later for yeah, this. Um, so yeah, the OP is great. You know, I mean, the, the new rule for, or at least for the British, that I can call in fire at one place, and if I succeed there, I can call in fire for another battery elsewhere, and not be a, you know the next turn up. It's actually counts as calling on that same turn. Gives the British a little bit, but I don't see myself having multiple twenty-five pound batteries. Not at that kind of cost. So whether that be a factor, I'm not sure. And then, yeah, I could do. I could maybe call in fire for mortars. I could call in fire for the heavy machine guns, but that doesn't feel historic that we should be calling in for these rifle brigade type entities instead of the actual 25 pounders. Given but, that most people are going to be running at least two formations, you have, so your formation leader can can also observe Yes. on top right. of the actual gun battery itself. So yeah. it's almost like the observer is, a, you can leave it at home and not... You don't need to. And it's two anymore. points. And you know, that it's two points. It's actually fairly pricey, but he's also a steward. That doesn't, you know, <laughs> he's got a gun. Yeah. He has a gun. He does not cost you any victory points if you want to tear him around the back. You can't hold an objective though, but he can cause some damage back there. Yeah. Um, you know, I can see, but again, you know, we're using that historically, that he's not supposed to be <laughs> tallying holding in the backfield right. when he's an observer. Um, but again, it's an option. Yeah, the nice thing too is the way version four is that that's a unit. It is a unit for yeah. deployment. You put them out first to see yeah. where the opponent's going, stuff yeah. like that. So you can do do those kind of shenanigans. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm a cause. We have uh, we only have one type, and it's. Um, yeah, it's a shame. I kind of like the, the different armored cars, and I, but I feel a feeling that we might see some more of those. Yeah. Um, I typically use Marvin Har Harrington's. I, Harrington's, Harrington's, whatever they are. Harrington's. I, uh, I like those cars. I just, because I, you know, I model some up. I've got a nice little umbrella on one, the captured AT gun. I always like that armored car. Um, but I do have three Humbers. Um, but right now, I don't know if I'm going to use it, because Scout Car is a mandatory choice. Sorry, not Scout Car. The uh, Universal Carrier is a mandatory choice for motor companies. So you're going to have that unit anyway. Yeah. I'm not sure if that Humber on the car troop really brings you anything different. Uh, but I do have one unit. I may try it out. The only time I could see it being used if you went all armor and didn't and take a Scout Car, you might want to take the Humbers. Um, yeah. That might be a, a good use for it. Well, I think we, wait, we skipped the 17 pound. Uh, on purpose. No. <laughs> so, so yeah, with a lot of conversations about seventeen twenty-five and you know the tiger being always being in these books because I think you know myself again selfishly, but I think a lot of people share the feeling that the the iconic the battles of the desert, the, you know the back and forth and the Gazala El Alamein, the chase. You know it it happened before Tunisia. It happened before there was tigers. It happened before. Let's see, he's even scratching it out. David, <laughs> it happened before the seventeen twenty-five appeared, and to me that's the whole. That's what I love about the desert is those, there's no super weapons out there yet. They're just, they're making do with what they could. Right. And, um, and I really like that aspect. So the downside is, you know, will I be taking 1725s? Hopefully not. I, I don't really want to. Um, it's a good gun, but, you know, if we play some Tunisian battles, sure, I'll, I might bring it in once in a while. But to me, it's, it's not what the desert's about. And I, so I, will, I have a couple of them, but I've, actually, I don't think I've, I've uh, used I don't think I have. Maybe I have. I'm not sure. Well, do you feel? I, I got the impression reading this that maybe they included this strictly as a counter because the, the German book gets the tiger. Yeah, yeah. I think so. And um, they mentioned the tiger all in this rule. The, you know, the blurbs they're talking about how it penetrates tigers. And yeah, the tiger yeah. but it tiger. lost its penetration. I don't know why that the 17 pounder went down from 13 to 12, but the 88 went from 13 to 14. That <laughs> difference of two. It's the same trick. It's annoying that I say, I don't, it doesn't feel historic to me. The 17 pounder was an excellent gun. I don't know if it lost any of its power being on the 25 pounder carriage. I don't know about that. Mm -hmm. I've got to be honest, that's not my, I don't know really if that's the case. Um, however, I say, I, again, it's a, it's a unit I'm going to rarely take, just mainly because it just does not fit what I like in the desert forces. And you're right, with, with any, uh, any tank of 12 against a Tiger's front armor of 9. Still not that great. No, you're, you're looking no not at all. Yeah. But other, other but it's better than anything. Tank, well, against other tanks, though, but from yeah. five and six, it's just going to cut right through. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What's our next unit? Bofors. Bofors. So Bofors. Bofors. So actually, the Bofors are pretty. I, I kind of like the Bofors. Um, it's gonna, it's a reasonable any tank gun too, uh, especially as you know, the yeah. war. It's great, but you know, you're going to see the, the planes. 
we're going to see them. Um, but the both is, is a nice unit for just having some light AT in the backfield, but also giving yourself some uh, aircraft support, especially if, you, you know, if you're kind of relying heavily on those 25 patterns, you might want to protect them against yeah. that. Um, I actually haven't really looked at the Stuka, to be honest, to see what its stats are and how good it is. But uh, uh, the both is a pretty, it's just a cool looking tour. I mean, I, I do have three already painted up, so I expect I will probably be using them in some list. Well, you notice the games we played, we had air and uh, in your battle, there was no anti air. I mean, your nice. planes were never shot. <laughs> yeah. My planes were never shot. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, these guys could definitely threat, threaten. Yeah. Well, then we got, uh, what we got next? Oh, just the hurricane. Hurricane. Yep. Yeah. So we're going into the air support. Um, so, again, one option. Um, I don't actually have the two hurricanes. I use Kitty Hawks, and I'm not going to change that. I like the Kitty Hawk. <laughs> okay. because, but, you know, just stats wise. Set your ways. It's okay. You know, stat wise, it's fine. Um, again, it's not going to, it's only AT7. It's not going to tear up a bunch of tanks. It's not going to hurt a Tiger, which, to be honest, a 40 millimeter gun, it should not be really taking and doing much damage to a Tiger. Uh, and it's only going to have a, you know, a 50 50 chance against regular Panzer threes, Panzer fours. But its strength, which we talked about earlier, yeah, if that opponent is taking martyrs, which mm -hmm. are t uh, deadly against British mm -hmm. guys. You know, if he's taking martyrs, we're taking range schleps. It, it'll take them out in a heartbeat. Those hurricanes will tear up those side armor zero vehicles. Absolutely. And I think that's where the strength is for the yeah. hurricane. I thought it was interesting they gave us the cannon armed hurricane first. They didn't give us a bomb armed variant. Yeah. But I think it's that tank, that whole tank hunting yeah. desert one that just kind of getting this of that. Yeah, it is, it is very iconic. iconic feel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm but okay with it. I would have liked one that had a bomb to threaten the, the tiger, even if just just a little bit. Yeah. So. Uh, all right. Uh, so that's all the units. So that's it. So there's a lot of things missing. Um, you know, there are definitely some things missing. I, you know, I, I know a lot of people have been a little bit upset about that. Even I was, you know, and say I was a little bothered at how slim pickings this was in the book. However, the, the mention of these new command cards that are going to bring some new units in, some new options like the New Zealand Div Cav, I, that's good. I, I can live with that. I know some people are like, well, I don't want to buy new cards, but you know, it, it doesn't sound like it's probably going to be a, a huge expense. The books now are fairly reasonably priced. You know, they're only $20 for an actual army book. Um, so I have no issue with that too, adding a little bit of variety in that format. Um, I don't feel like the game we played, I don't feel like I missed anything, to be honest. I really didn't. I had everything that, you know, like I said, maybe a little bit of mobility in the infantry uh, and any tank guns, but otherwise, no, it had the same feel for me, maybe a little bit better. I liked it. Yeah, yeah. And to round out this book, there's also a painting guide, but that's pretty, pretty amazing. Don't understand. But, yeah. I mean, it's, it's pretty cool, though. Um, I find these handy. I love the Team Yankee one. That, that helped a lot. Yeah. But otherwise, um, so... Thumbs up on this book, Mark? You, you um, like it? Initially, when I first heard what was going to be in it, I had a big thumbs down. Yeah, uh, yeah. Now I did. I really did. And I think a lot of people did too. Now that I've looked through it, now that I kind of look at the forces I truly have in my, you know, that I've, that, but I, I'm not missing a lot, and I, I, I'm okay with it. I, I do like the book, um, and yeah, I think we get a lot of play out of it. Mm -hmm. Definitely. What do you think, Jake? You know, uh, like I said, actually, British is one of the few armies I haven't really uh, started or branched into and actually I have a big honey steward army in a box waiting to be built and painted so I'm excited about this uh, about this list and um, kind of like you said I was kind of bummed about some things being uh, not in the first run but you will fix the German wall yeah <laughs> we'll get we'll get to that but I mean overall I'm I'm excited to get into British and actually paint up what I have in my, my little hobby closet yeah and I, I really liked it I, I love the historical aspect of Flames of War mm -hmm. um, and I, I realize and I understand the, the complaints that, that I heard about this book um, but it really opens up you know you're gonna have to trust your opponent you know are we gonna have a, a early mid-war <laughs> you know thing and let's not take Tigers and 17 every time every time yeah that's the thing uh, that will that will taint it me a little bit if every you know but the good thing is we don't it's not like we go we go going open terrain, open gaming every single week. You know, we right. have games amongst ourselves and a little conversation ahead of time. But uh, yeah, this would grow old for me if every time I went out and played, it was like a tiger Tigers, every time, seventeens you know. every time. They're they're the rare weapons. They are not what you know won or lost that desert battle. So um, yeah, I, I hope you don't. I, I want to play once in a while. I'm yeah. okay with that. I just don't want to see them all the time. Yeah. So I think being upfront with your opponents and, and talking about that kind of stuff is the way to go, yeah. which is what you always want to do. I mean, you don't want to play against someone who's a, a power gamer and that, that's their <laughs> goal. Um, you know. <laughs> uh, as a personal experience. <laughs> yeah. as, the so, as the power gamer. <laughs> <laughs> as the power, 
So there you go, guys. That's our Desert Rats uh, look at the book, the new book. Um, I think we all like it. I think the, the first instinct was to, to kind of be concerned about it. There's still some concerns, but I, I like what I saw, and it sounds like you guys did too. Yeah. I think, with, yeah, again, I hate to be selfish, but it, I, I personally did not lose as much as I thought I was initially. Because, yeah, I don't have my usual amount of cause, but I'm not taking on cause anyway. <laughs> um, it's just that, you know, the mobility of the six pounders is one that I didn't notice the difference on. Um, mine were immobile the whole game and rarely, in fact, I don't think they did anything that game. Six pounders, yeah. Um, and, and so that part of it is a little a little different for me. It'll take some getting used to. Yeah. But, um, yeah. but even then, those guys could, you could blitz them four. I guess they still only move two. I don't know about that. We have to look it up because they only move two tactical, and I'm not sure if the blitz moves them four. It'd be kind of strange if they could, but I, I don't, don't want to get into the rules better. Right now, so <laughs> that's plenty of time for that. All right, all right. Well, there you go, folks. That's a look at uh, Desert Rats. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you liked what you, you saw here, go ahead and give us a subscribe and like. Um, let us know what you think about Desert Rats. If you have questions about the book, let us know. We'd be more than happy to answer. Thanks for watching, and keep on wargaming.